This exhibition was originally planned for the Tokyo Olympic season this year, in the hope of sharing the splendor and charm of kimono culture with many visitors from around the world. Regretfully, due to the spread of the coronavirus and subsequent travel restrictions, our exhibition did not have the exposure we hoped for. I understand there are many who find it very unfortunate. Thinking about those who wish they could see the exhibition, we make every effort to create video content and hope that you will enjoy this exhibition virtually. This is an exhibition which presents the history of kimono. Kimono is a type of traditional Japanese costume, which used to be referred to as kosode, or small sleeves. Long ago, kosode originally functioned as a type of undergarment, worn under robes called osode, or big sleeves, by the wealthy upper class. From around 700 years ago, during the later Muromachi period, Kosode gradually became an outerwear affordable to the entire population. Various decorative techniques were developed for this outerwear over time, gradually shaping it into what we now call kimono. By examining the changes in kimono appearance, we can see that people through time were enjoying kimono as fashion, just like we do today with our fashion, and that styles changed along with the times. This exhibition consists of five chapters or themes, tracking kimono evolution from ancient times to the modern era. Ichiku Kobota's works are part of chapter five, where we look at kimono of the present days and how it is evolving now. Many of the kimonos displayed in this section are from after World War II, a time when people, including many Japanese women, stopped wearing kimono. During wartime, kimonos were burned, asked to be turned in for war efforts or refashioned into a type of work pants called monpe, which was easier to move around in. This caused Japanese to move away from wearing kimono and towards wearing Western clothes. As a result, the variety of kimono designs as well as its purpose changed quite dramatically. I believe Ichiku Kobota's works reflect just that. In 1939, during the war, Kubota came across a piece of fabric on display here at the Tokyo National Museum. It was only a small fragment of a type of kimono called tsuchigahana, but he was deeply moved by its tie-dyeing technique. He resolved to recreate this technique that was originally crafted in the Muromachi to Azuchi Momoyama periods, and after decades of work, he finally succeeded in reconstructing its design. And so one could say the brilliance of Kubota's creations took root here at the Tokyo National Museum, which is why we have decided to celebrate that connection by displaying his works. Not only do we have a special connection with Kubota, but more importantly, he left behind amazing works of art. His most significant production is a series of works titled Kokyo, which is on display here. Ichiku Kobota has passed away now, but he had an exceptionally grand project in mind while he was alive. By portraying natural motifs and seasonal variations over a series of kimono, he wanted to illustrate one whole magnificent natural phenomenon. It was meant to be complete with dozens of kimono coming together. This was the fuel for his creative drive and imagination.
I think the way Kubota used the kimono as a medium to expand into a world beyond the original kimono comes from his unique sensibility and vigor as an artist. I think it is fair to say that Ichiku Kubota was the only kimono artist who produced installation art. In that sense, I believe this exhibition offers visitors a great opportunity to appreciate the unique art of Ichiku Kubota.